Okay, so now I'm going to take a couple of the things that we explored in the past, our, our work with the barometer in particular, and I'm going to take another image and I'm going to show you what is normally referred to as just basic Photoshop type stuff. We're not actually using Photoshop, we're using GIMP of course. And so basically it's going to take two images and put them together to kind of make them look like they belong together. I've used this before to put like hard hats on cartoon characters or something like that. Something where it, it makes for a nice presentation for kids in particular, because a lot of times I'm teaching science to kids. And so being able to incorporate things like that helps out a lot. Cartoons and then other things where you may not be able to, you wouldn't have a pre-made image of them together. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to pretend that I made a barometer wristwatch. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do file, open, and I'm going to bring back up our barometer, the one that I cropped out where it's just by itself, which is great because that's what I want. And so the next thing I want to do, because I want to turn this into a barometer wristwatch, I need a wristwatch. So here's where it gets kind of tricky, and we're going to talk finally about layers. So I'm going to do open as layers. And from Wikipedia, there is a wristwatch here. Uh, the picture was provided by our dear friend Zed Jr. And so here's my wristwatch. Ugh, my work's cut out for me. That's a lot tinier than my barometer. I don't need a gigantic picture, so instead of blowing up the watch, I'm probably going to shrink the barometer down. But before we get too much on that, let's talk about layers. Over here, we have our layers tab. You can see I've got one image here, which is a layer. That's my friend, the wristwatch. I can click the move tool and move him around. Yay, so I can put him anywhere. Let's put him back up over here out of the way for now. Okay, and then down here I have what's called my background, which it calls anything, the first thing that you load up your background when you start playing around with layers. And so that's my barometer. And then I could grab that guy and move him around the same with the move tool. I can still, on any of the individual layers, I can go in and I can do select on this layer. So I can do that. Hit enter and then delete. And I can still do all of the stuff that I could before. The one thing I want to be careful of is which layer over here I'm currently selected on. Right now I'm on the background. Now if I switch over here instead and I hit delete, nothing happens because I don't have anything there. If I move this guy back over, that selection is still there. And I hit delete. Oh, look, it gets rid of that. And so the only thing that happens when I give orders happens on the layer that I have currently selected. Now, we're starting to run low on time, so I need to pick this back up. I can make layers go invisible so that they're out of the way by clicking this eye. If the eye is there, I can see it. If it's not, I can't see it. That's just here in the program. That won't actually affect it in the actual image itself. You can make them partially transparent all the way to completely transparent by adjusting this. And whatever you leave it at, so if I put it at 50%, that'll make it half invisible, effectively half transparent. And so I could save it like that. You can use that to make like ghost type images, that sort of thing. So I've got these guys together. I've got two layers. You can have a whole bunch of layers. I've done projects that have 400 layers at a time, which is a pain. But so you can have a bunch of different layers. We're going to keep it simple with just two because we're going to make an image out of this. So I've got the layers set up, kind of got that explained somewhat. And so what I need to do now, actually I'm going to leave that guy over there. I want to select my barometer. And I'm going to do select none so I can get rid of that circle that I drew in there because I don't actually want it. And I want to scale it. Now remember before we went to image, scale image, but that scales everything all of the layers together. I don't want that. I want the barometer smaller. So we're going to go to layer and I'm going to do scale layer. And in this case, I think 20% ought to do the trick. So I'm going to bring it down to 20% of its original size. Bingo. And so now if I do this, bring him back over. Oh, it'd be nice if I could see the other one a little bit better. So over here in layers, I'm going to drag this guy and just put him on the bottom. And we're back. Okay. So I've switched the location, the background, and the other layer by just grabbing it and dragging it down. I cannot do that right now because the image capturing software that I'm using to record this is blocking it, unfortunately. But normally when you grab the guy, 
and you have it like this, it'll show that you've picked it up, and then it'll draw a little line there beneath the other image saying, hey, you can drop it here, and you drop it there, and they'd switch places. I can't show you that specifically because of the limitations of this recording, unfortunately. But that's what I did, very simple. And so you can always reorder stuff. This will also be useful later if you try and make animations because each frame or each layer can become a frame in the animation. But we've got our background, which is no longer the background, strangely enough. Like I said, it just names whatever the first file you load in as the background. In fact, I'm going to go in and I'm going to rename this to barometer. So that way I can keep track of it a bit, e a bit easier. So what I'm going to do now is I've got these guys kind of overlapped here. Let's see how close we can get it. I'm selected on the barometer, which is good. And so, hey, that's actually a pretty good fit right there. And so I'm gonna sneak in. If I need to, because this image looks kind of small, if I need to look a little bit more, I can always go down here. And I could go up to say 400%, dun dun dun. And everything looks blurry here because this isn't a high resolution image. But it can let me see. I've got a little bit showing there, a little bit showing there. Uh, I've got more. Probably messed it up. Oop. There we go. Actually, that's not bad. And so by using the zoom, which you can do here, I can go back down to 100%. Or I can go up to view, and I can do zoom, and I've got all of these options here. And so, But for now, I've, I've gotten what I want out of it. Cool. All right. So... I've got what looks to be my barometer watch, very spy oriented, but I've got kind of a big image. So you can see before it goes to gray here, I've got the checkerboard pattern all the way out here. That's the size of my original barometer image. Now the checkerboard pattern's fine because it's transparent. So it's not gonna cause any problems. I could put this in a presentation and all I would see is just this in here and I could put other images over the stuff, but it's kind of sloppy to leave it that way. So I'm gonna show you one final thing. We're going to go to select with the rectangle tool. And I'm going to select out this image here. I don't need all of it. Most of the stuff is still kind of, yeah. It's, I'm not going to lose anything by cutting off some of the edges there. And I just want to get it cropped down as much as I can. So I hit select. And now I go back up to the image tool. Because remember, layer controls anything in the layer that I'm currently on, which is just the barometer. Image controls the whole thing all at once. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to Crop to Selection. And so this is another option that we could have done with the barometer to get rid of just the transparency altogether. But I wanted to play around a bit with transparency and get you used to the idea that the checkerboard pattern means that it's transparent. Okay, so we're pretty good on that. The final thing that I can do for what I want is I can come over here to Layers. I can right-click and I can go to Merge Down. Basically what that does is it says take this top layer and smush it down onto the bottom layer, the layer directly beneath it, I should say, and it's just going to become part of that image. So whatever it goes down on top of, the original face of that watch, for instance, is now gone. So I can't get that back. You want to be careful with using the Merge Down. Make certain you've made all the changes you want because now it's going to be a lot more work for me to try and move that barometer around. But now it's functioning as just one solid image, which is great. So I'm going to do save as barometer watch. And then doesn't need an index. And it should be able to handle JPG. I think I got rid of all of the transparency stuff. So let's go ahead with that. It gave me a warning. JPEG can't handle transparency. So it still has the transparent layer underneath all of it. And it's warning me about that. So I'm going to do export and save. Now what that means is, since I said export, if it were still using part of the transparency, if there were any part of the transparency still showing where it would normally be invisible if it were a PNG, instead it would be a white screen. But we should be good. There's my barometer watch. So there you go.